Here we go. Good morning, everybody. It's so lovely to see you all on this July Monday morning. Um, one thing I'll say straight away is if you can get access to a business card or a bank card, obviously I'm not showing my bank card on screen, it's a works a loyalty card because obviously I'm an artist. That might just help us with um, some scaling. If you don't have access to those things, don't worry. You can imagine the size of a business card or a bank card. Um, I imagine this session will last an hour, maybe a little bit over. Um, it's been recorded, like Mandy said. So if you do have to leave early, please do so. Um, you can pick it up from YouTube later on at a time to suit you. So to start off with, uh, my name is Alex Van. This session is called Castles and Cubes. No interpreter. Sean, would you like me to sign? I'll sign uh, at the same time because I just realised there's a, a chat um, asking for interpreter. So um, this session is called Castles and Cubes uh, and it's a drawing session. Um, and it will last an hour. I'm going to talk a little bit about my work, my creative work, uh, and... Um, show uh, an example of a drawing which is Dudley Castle. Um, if you have any questions please at any time raise your hand or type it in the chat and I'll try my best to answer. Um, so let's we'll talk about my own sort of creative practice because I do lots of things. I do art and design, songwriting and um, art workshops with different groups um, and all that is really about problem solving so how you sort of uh, initially get a problem and how you think about you can solve it and we thought that rubik's cube this was a good analogy about that so that is also problem solving um so firstly if you want to sort of introduce yourselves on the chat if you can type in your name uh, where you're from, and if you know how to solve Rubik's Cube already, just let me know in the chat and we'll have a look. Of course, there's many different ways to solve a cube. And just a disclaimer, I won't show you how to solve your cube if you have one with you, because each cube is different. But I'm going to show you how I'm going to solve mine. Uh, and it's the same sort of process to solve yours as well. I have got um, a PDF document of um, my own solution, my own way of solving the cube. So we can share that uh, afterwards if you're interested. Right, so I can see that Andy it's from Lebanon has got a cube, um, but can't solve all of it, it can just do one side. Uh, Mandy from Stourbridge, uh, and she's hosting the session today. Got a cube, I see. Kanj uh, can't solve the cube. It's fine, it's not a problem. So thank you for all that. Uh, I'm a bit of a multidisciplinary artist. So I like to do lots of different things. Um, and I notice as well that a lot of the artists on this project are the same. They like to do different activities, not just one thing. Uh, and I think um, it makes life interesting. And actually during COVID, it was really important to do, to carry on working. Um, so for example, I do graphic design and that meant there was an income coming into the house, uh, which was you know quite important and reassuring. Um, I was talking to Sal, so she's the lady that interviewed me for a podcast, 
which is available on the website. And it was really interesting because she's got a clever way of pulling things out, information from you that you didn't realise was there, or at least you didn't realise was that important. Um, so that's the reason why the cube has happened today. And you'll notice there's two screens, one with my face on, with the orange T-shirt, and the other one is pointing downwards to a drawing and a cube. Hopefully you can see that. But don't worry, we're going to pin soon, uh, and it'll be, just be visual at that time. Just watch me drawing. Um, it comes a little bit later. So, um, yeah, so that was always about creative people like to solve problems. So that's that's the link. Um, I'm going to screen share in a minute. It's an example of my graphic design work. Um, so to show that the answers don't always come straight away. Sometimes you need a little bit of time, planning, research, and then you can solve a problem. So that's, again, why the link to the cube, because don't pick up a cube and it automatically solves. You need to work through it and, you know, um, go in steps. So I hope that makes sense. Okay, so I'm going to screen share. Oh, and just before I do that, obviously, Paul McCartney is the exception, because apparently he woke up with the song yesterday, already written in his brain. He dreamt it. And barring a few sort of lyric changes, the song was complete. But I think even he would agree that's quite rare. And usually uh, there's quite a process, you know, quite a lot of work to do to get a finished product. So let's try screen sharing to show an example. So the example here is of graphic design. So I like to design logos for different companies. Um, and this was um, a music recording studio who asked me to design their new website. So looking at the problem, and then I'll just show you, this is this is how my mind works. They're so seeing inside my mind at the moment. This is how I work. I like to sort of write things down, what the problem is, describe it. And the problem here was that they needed a new website, obviously. Um, and they'd already got an old one. So I started by looking at that. And you can see, not that inspiring, really. Um, a lot of black background with white writing. Um, and mostly writing just a few images. So here we have some more examples of that, of the old website. Uh, a little bit of photographs, some information about this personnel, um, but really not very exciting to be honest. Functional, but not very engaging. So then I ask what the customer likes, likes a bit of color, wants it to look more modern, likes some photographs and some information about equipment and things. So then I started by looking at other recording studios, what do they look like? And this is kind of some of that research. Um, I noticed they've got some quite strong branding uh, and I realized this company didn't have any. So some more examples of websites. Uh, and then how to display. So some examples of how to show different bits of information. Some best practices, like having customer testimonials. And links to other sites as well. Customer loves uh, Alice in Wonderland and particularly the Mad Hatter. So it's just from uh, the books, obviously. Uh, and how he started his company it was branded as Mad Hat and they had a name change, but still wanted to refer to the past. So obviously some in images there of the Mad Hatter. Hopefully you can see those uh, on the screen. Um, and the colours that were coming out that he really liked were orange and black. So 
my um, process then normally starts with some drawing on paper um, and really started with, you know, redrawing this hat and the ticket inside it and how that could represent the name of the company. And then really sort of focused, zoomed in to one particular aspect of this and sort of then enlarge that. So you can see more down towards the bottom is trying to make, keep it simple is always the best way to make things, reduce things down to the most simplest form. And this is the final logo that I designed for them. Um, so hopefully you can see there's still an aspect of the hat, the top hat, but just hinted at. And the M looks is the ticket inside the hat. So you get M and the number, the number two described in the picture so hopefully that all comes through it still says it's m2 but still relates to mad hatter and in fact the tagline says you know it's mad hat um studios as well so then that transferred to their website bring out those orange colors make it a lot brighter more photographs and different pictures there of the pages uh and some testimonials and customers really happy with the final result. Uh, it's a lot brighter, a bit more modern. Uh, and the important thing was they now have some branding. So I hope you uh, enjoyed watching that very really sort of brief example of the way that I work. I'll stop sharing. So that was just a quick example of some graphic design work. Um, another example that I talked about with Sal was writing a song about the black country artist is Charlie Grigg. Uh, and he um, drew for comics like Beano and Dandy, very sort of well-known artist, did really well. Um, so uh, I was asked to write a song. And in fact, I ended up writing two songs about his life, uh, which you can see, actually, I, I did a... A YouTube video for this project last year when it was a different brand and you can still see that on the YouTube channel if you look uh, at my You Shine session it's the first song that I performed about four minutes in and you can see that song um, his life was really interesting he also had dementia so I thought it was important to include that in the song as well um, and then that project about Charlie uh, led on to uh, another piece of work, which is a book. So I'll show you that here. So this is written by um, Billy Spakeman, the Black Country uh, writer and, and performer. And he asked me to draw the illustrations. And so I did that. Um, you can see this is aimed at younger people. So you can see the illustrations are very bright, very colourful, really want to sort of engage younger people, telling the same story about Charlie's life. You know, very interesting, a nice project. And I like how one art form can lead onto another art form. So the song became a book story. Uh, a lot of artists involved in that fundraising for um, a blue plaque on the school that Charlie attended when he was younger. Uh, so quite a complicated thing to do a book as well. Again, you've got to research your audience. It's got to match the right age. Um, and yet another example of breaking down a project into smaller pieces is my music album. So this is called You Shine, like I just mentioned. And there it is. And it includes strands of different creative um, parts of my life, really. So songwriting, playing the guitar, uh, singing, uh, arranging and recording and mixing the music, working with other musicians and doing artwork. So the drawings on the cover the graphic design inside, so all nicely presented there. 
um, then led on to website design and video uh, making and editing and YouTubing. And then you've got the job of promoting it as well. So making people aware that it, it's there. Um, so it started with a lot of planning. And this is another project that we do with my company, Real Arts Workshops, which is on my T-shirt there. We do a lot of work with different groups. And one of our uh, strategies is the building bridges. So for my album, I broke it down into six simple steps that I would achieve my aim. So you start by, you know, selecting the songs and then recording some demos, sort of like rough songs, so you know what they're going to sound like and what's going to be involved. Practice and practice them and engage other musicians as well. And then book a studio, uh, go and record the songs and then promote your work, which I wanted to do um, on internet streaming sites and also make a CD because I'm quite old fashioned and I love CDs. I love having something that you can hold uh, and that you can then, you know, bring the information. Uh, so a few examples of, you know, how I work. Back to what we're doing today. My main business is delivering workshops and a uh, little bit of BSL as well included. And each workshop is different, so it involves a lot of, research, uh, a lot of discussion with the customer. Um, like I mentioned with the logo design and the book and the CD, it's all a very similar process. It doesn't just happen automatically. Um, quite often I do Zoom sessions like we're doing today. And we decided that we'd do Dudley Castle because it's really a beautiful place. Um, it was built originally as a wooden mot and the bailey. And this is back in the Norman times, 1070. So a long time ago. Um, and it's in the Doomsday Book of 1086. At that time it belongs to a man called William Fitz. I'm testing my sign language now. And it's called. So it's been there for a long time. Um, it was strong enough to withstand uh, King Stephen's uh, siege in 1138. And it was one of 21 castles that were demolished in 11, uh, and sorry, in Henry II's time. Started to rebuild it in 1262. Uh, and then later, John Dudley. Uh, who was uh, the Duke of Northumberland, took it over in 1537. So a lot of history, and that's what we're drawing today. But why is it linked to the Rubik's Cube? Well, as you can see, my cube has been mixed up, and you'll have to trust me. It's in total chaos. It's been nothing organised about it at all. And I know that the aim is to have six different colors on each side uh and that's the problem that's the problem that needs to be solved at the moment it's all mixed up so that's a bit like your initial meeting about a project uh customer can sometimes be a little bit vague um and it's up to us creatives to sort of write a brief and get a bit more structure around it so again looking at my cube it's not really in total chaos. There are There is some uh, order already in there. I'm just gonna explain some, some truths about this cube. So, at the very center of each face, that never moves, it's always there. And red will always be next to blue. So no matter what I do, Red is still next to blue. It's not going anywhere. These middle pieces, they're constant. 
So they can rotate round, but they won't move place. These pieces are called the corners uh, and they can move around. They can jump around and they can also rotate. So they can rotate within themselves. These pieces that I'm pointing at now are called edges. And again, they can move, they can jump around and they can rotate as well. Although there is some reason and rhyme to this. So they tend to go in threes, which I'll explain later. So middles never swap, edges and corners, they can. So uh, the aim is to get six different colors, but obviously all one color on each face. So what I'm going to do, first of all, I'm going to aim to get one color on one face. So I'm going to ask Andy if you can nominate a color. So this will just prove that I'm not cheating. If you just type a message or let me know what color first you'd like me to solve out of green, red, white, yellow, orange, blue. And then I'll solve that first face. Hello, Andy. Would you like to nominate a colour? Uh, green. Green. Right. So I'm just going to put all the green pieces in place. Now, most people I've found can do one face. Uh, and by the way, I think the design of a cube is rather beautiful as well. I think it's an incredible invention. So simple, again, really, the idea about it is so simple and complicated at the same time, which really strange. So one thing you'll notice is, yes, I've got that all green, perfect. But these are all different colours at the moment. So the, the next step is I want to get all these the same colour. So to do that, I'll just do a bit of reorganising. So there's the reds on the side there and greens there. Uh, I always look at my cube very carefully. It's quite tricky on a Zoom call. Okay. So you should see now I've got green and on every single face around it, they're the same colour as well. Okay, so if you've got a cube with you and you can get to that stage, you, you're one step, that's one out of four steps to solving your cube, right? So now the important thing now is to remember what I told you about the middles, these never move. Well, if you just simply rotate that round to match the middle, already you can see Doesn't that already look a bit sort of solved? And that's just by lining up your middles. A simple move, sometimes just one simple, tiny little step can make all the difference. Right, I'm gonna leave that there for a second. Now, I'm gonna ask Mandy to pin, oh, don't tell me I've gone off. Actually, get my right. best laid plans. My camera seems to have gone off, so I'm going to try and reconnect.
Yeah, it's coming. Cool. camera's on. It is on, yeah. Do you know what? I think it might have been inactive for too long. Oh, right, okay. Yeah, it's, it's on now. Okay, so if you can pin that one, and we'll go into the drawing. Yep. So just to let Sharon know, um, pinning the drawing now, so you don't need interpreter. Just watch the drawing and follow. Okay. Perfect. Have you all got a piece of paper and something to draw with? So a pencil would be perfect, especially if it was soft, like a 4B would be amazing. If you've got a credit card, uh, not important, but if you can imagine the size of a card, that's going to help with some uh, proportion. And then um, a piece of paper, so a piece of paper. And just to show you, this is the aim for today. Do you want me to pin that one as well, Alex? Um, no, so if you just pin, oh, thanks, Andy. <laughs> Give me a little round of applause. Um, is the drawing one pinned now? Yeah, yeah, it's the main one. So you don't need to look at me anymore. Um, you just look at the drawing. So, right. What I'm going to start by doing is get my pencil and get in my credit card or business card size. And if you imagine that's about, you know, three quarters of a card down and a little bit in. So we're not too close to the edge, the top and the bottom. I'm just going to draw. Now, I'm going to draw this with my pencil quite dark so that you can see it. You can draw very light on yours. And if you've got a, this is obviously A4. So if your paper's smaller, just adjust that. I'm gonna do a second credit card or business card size rectangle there. So you end up with two rectangles like that. Everyone happy? And then we're going to add a bit more. To this, so I'm going to do an arch. Going up like that. Let me bring this down a bit. So remember, yours can be very light. These are the guidelines, so don't draw them too thick at the moment. And um, I'm not using a ruler, but if you feel comfortable, if you feel better doing it with a ruler, you can do. This one comes a little bit wider around that line. It's an old castle, so don't worry about the lines being perfect. It can be rough. It's a ruin of a castle, actually. So there could be a bit of a bank there. Yeah. Uh, this one can become wall as well now hopefully you've got an eraser what i tend to do with my erasers is cut them with a knife or some scissors so you get a nice sort of sharp edge which is useful for rubbing out guidelines so for example, the credit card we don't need anymore. That can go. Uh, don't worry if you don't have an eraser. 
you can leave the marks on. If you did them light, when you come to do the actual real drawing, you can press harder and you'll go over those guidelines anyway. It's going to be hard for me, particularly because I'll put those on dark so that you can see them. Uh, so I'll just have to draw extra strong when I come to do mine. Whilst you're doing that then, if you're just finishing off those guidelines, I'll go on to step two on the cube, which is putting the corners in the right place. So uh, anatomy of a cube opposite the green is the blue. So that's always going to be the case. So I know that blue edges will be there as well. In fact, two are already there. Uh, two corners, should I say, corner pieces there. Uh, now, if I move that one to there, I can see that matches my centers as well. So I've got orange center, orange corner, white center, white corner, blue center, blue corner. So that is in the right place. And it's also in the right rotation as well, which is quite unusual. This one isn't in the right place because it's red and not orange. So I know that needs to swap. Um, this one again is not in the right place because it's orange and not red. And this one is in the wrong place because it's yellow and not white. The other two are right because it's blue and red. So I need to go through this process of putting them in the right place. Okay, so Okay. All the corners are in the right places, but they're not in the right rotation. So these moves, by the way, are in the PDF. So if you want to um, pick them up from that, that'll be fine. It's a bit hard to explain the set moves on a Zoom call. Um, you just have to trust me. Now then, all the corners are now in the right place. And they're also in the right rotation as well. So if you're just to ignore the edge pieces and just focus on the corners, all the corners of my cube are now in the right place. So my green still intact from before remember that was the first one that we did and uh ignoring the edges concentrate on the corners they all look right now so i'm going to hold that there for a second it's just starting to look a bit more solved let's just hold it i'm going to go into step two uh of the drawing now this is where hopefully you've got a sharp pencil because we're going to add all the dark bits. So what I mean by that is, and we're just gonna, uh, at the same time, sort of adjust our outline. So this has got a bit more of a pointed edge on top of it. Comes down to that edge there, and then you get these crenellations. It's not a wonderful word. All the battlements, they look like teeth. And I found out yesterday they're called crenellations. This tower goes up a bit higher. Now 
and it's got a secondary piece there. This wall. Marion can't see the drawing. Um, can everybody else see? Like I could see. Is that my can you concede? I don't know. I realize I, I, I pressed the word pin. It's definitely a pinned. Andy can and, see it. Andy can see. Kanj can see. I can see. Marion, I don't know if, what device you're on, but I know sometimes you need to scroll across to a different view. So I think it defaults to a gallery view where you can see everybody, but you can sometimes scroll across to see just the pinned. Marion's got it. Got Great. it. Bab. So thanks for that. Yeah, obviously just use the chat anytime you need to. This line is a bit bumpy because it's part of the ruin. It will stick out a bit more here. And then go in there. I'm going to put in a rough guideline for some foliage. So it's just some circular movements there. My guide, see how I'm going on. Okay. You've got a semicircle somewhere around there. It doesn't have to be exact. And then some kind of beam. So it kind of looks like a bit of like a sun rising out of the ocean. And then you've got a bit of a, a window there. A square window here. It doesn't have to be perfect, just rough. Uh, some more foliage there. An archway somewhere around there. We've got some more crenellations. I'm going to keep saying that word today. It's word of the day. I am in to get seven of these. So let me just put them in rough. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, they're quite small. They do definitely look like teeth. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, try and get seven if you can. This wall comes down like that. That one can stay there. Uh, a bit of a broken wall. It comes to, to out there and you get a window. And you get a window underneath. So leave yourself enough space to put a window. Another window, so two windows and an arch. And inside there, you've got another window. And then you've got this wall like a curtain wall which it does look a bit like a curtain as it's in ruin like a lot of Dud dudley castle is and then it goes to the top of that tower there this line coming down is a bit more wavy and goes down into the hillside there uh, if you really want to add detail you can add this building in the background as well Now we start to add. Uh, oh, I forgot my um, arched windows here. So there are three all together. Try and fit three in. Somewhere around there and then decide on a baseline that all line up. And then there are also about four little squares that go up there, which must have been, I guess, floor beams at one stage. I think we're going to go over, we're going to go past 12 o'clock, definitely. I think we started a bit later as well, but um, if anybody needs to leave, 
that's fine. It's going to be recorded. It's re recording anyway. So adding um, the dark bits, these are, are the details of the bricks. So you can do some horizontal lines and sometimes occasionally vertical ones as well. So there's no science to this. This is just literally pressing down a bit harder with your pencil. Trying to add a bit of detail. And sometimes they might be wide, sometimes they might be thin. It's the nature of this ruin. It's very rough. Just a bit of fun. So it's up to you. Just use your own taste. Uh, one thing I need to do is add this as a series of sort of cylindrical bricks. Come down there. Some more foliage, perhaps there. These, you can sort of reshape them as you go as well. They don't have to be perfectly squared off. They can have little round bits around the top, for example. And then this one, you'll notice I did this tooth a little bit wider. It's actually two put together. So if you did yours a bit wider, then you should have scope to divide that one a little bit. See how I'm 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 sneaking in detail now without you knowing. So some more. Uh, this wall comes down a bit wider. Just might do an adjustment with my eraser. Mind a bit distracting. You should get the sense that this wall has a bit taken out of it and that the right side of it is a little bit darker. So you can press harder with your pencil. It's a, it's a harder mark, but I'm just going to try and keep it in uh, perspective with the, the wall, which become a slight angle there. So they just slope down slightly. And then what you should be able to do is make those crenellations on the front wall stick out a bit more. So this wall is a lot lighter because the light will be hitting that from the front, but we can add a few of these lines. It's not perfect at the top. It could be quite bumpy, if you like, for want of a better word. And then I'm going to make this darker in here so that that wall that we just did stands out a bit more. So again, no rhyme or reason really, just uh, dashes, pressing down quite hard with my pencil. Uh, now, as I come into the middle, again, the light is starting to hit, so I'm making my lines a bit lighter there. So in that way, I'm getting a hint of some shadow. Some light and dark. Now, with my rising sun that I put on earlier, I'm just going to add a few darker marks to make it look like an archway. And then add some of these lines here which are your arch stones or voiseurs. I found out yesterday is a technical term. And the one in the middle is called a keystone. So they're just hinted at, you know, marks there. It's the bottom bit underneath that beam that is a window. So we'll be able to see whatever there's a sky through there. So I'm going to leave that white. I'm not going to draw in there. I'm going to draw around it. Uh, and this beam can perhaps have a bit more shadow on it. 
So you can see how that happened quite quickly. Nice bit of detail. Some more horizontal lines. Come to this wall now, and I really want to make that stand out a bit more. So I'm going to make it quite dark here. Horizontal lines, pressing down nice and firmly. A bit lighter as I go into the middle, like I said before. This window, we can add an arch to, and some more voices and keystones. There's some sort of bricks, if you like, as well, around there, just to add a bit of detail. And then quickly, doesn't have to take a long time. There's some, if you've got a soft pencil, you'll probably find it's going, like mine is a bit blunt now. That's the nature of soft pencils. So here, I'm making it very dark because it's in shadow. Trying to keep my cylinder bricks uh, bright. Finish those off. The left side of your castle. Now, the good thing about it going blunt is I can put my pencil almost flat and just do these circular movements. Mandy and I were talking earlier on that her teacher said that you shouldn't do circular movements like this, but actually, that's nonsense. Um, and the effect you want is of foliage. It's a very different texture to the castle, isn't it? It's not brick. You know, it's leaves are a lot more pliable. And you'll notice... If you do it lightly, you get a nice light grey. If you press down a little bit firmer as you do that, you get all sorts of little shadows appearing. So you build up the effect of a bush, really. And that can go into the castle, because as we know, it's a ruin. So some of it is overgrown. We can sort of build up bits of foliage like that quite quickly. Again, no science to it, really. You might just want to add a bit of a hill there. And then the other thing that you might want to consider is adding some foliage in the foreground. So it's a nice idea for composition. Again, that didn't take very long, did it? It was just literally just a few, a few marks. See so foliage, it's quite dark there, it can come over. One thing I will do now just to anchor the drawing is put this lovely arch in dark. So I'm going to do that by pressing firmly, make a nice black uh, archway there. It will probably be the darkest thing on the drawing. Add some lines here for your voices. I'm sure I'm pronouncing that correctly. If you wanted to just add a, a line at the top of them as well, just to make an arch. So that's nice. Uh, and on this front wall, you can have a few those brick marks as well. They're quite small bricks on this face. So going up to your arch then, your first one, so I'm right-handed, so I tend to work left to right, so I don't smudge. If you're left-handed, you might want to go the other way. Um, it's quite dark in there. It gets a bit lighter as you come out. So you could have the effect of, you know, if you do it horizontally, you'll get the effect of the brickwork in the right orientation. So not basically not doing it vertically, because that wouldn't make sense. So your bricks are coming out at that angle. And then add a few more to the wall. So your arch should stand out from your wall. On this one, we've got a little bit of a, a cutout. 
if you wanted to be really clever, you could add a few bricks to re-emphasize the um, ruinous effect. Add a few lines arching as well. And then the rest of it is the same as the other one. Darkness to light, the Wolverhampton motto. And then if you wanted to just add those, you can see that's the effect of the uh, window not being perfect. And then your last window is smaller. Don't ask me why. If you wanted to have a brick taken out there as well, you could do darkness inside it because it's in shadow. More bricks, bricks around it. So maybe add a few vertical ones as well. So we know that they're bricks. With your battlements or crenellations at the top, you could add a dark shadow to each one on the right hand side just so that we know it is 3D and not flat. Let me take the guideline out of that one because it's disappearing. There we go. And then the rest of it is the same sort of mid as the facing wall that we're doing now. And then with these ones, again, shadow on the right-hand side, you could do that on the bottom edge and the right edge just to make them stand out. And then the rest is as before. So you should very quickly get that wall. This one is like a, a sort of V shape and it's quite dark. I'm trying to keep it horizontal with my marks. And then it will just join the rest of that wall. Uh, I forgot to put this window at the top, which is like a little ellipse. And then the rest of that is your sort of lighter brickwork. This comes down. You wanted to at this stage do this arch right down the bottom as well as a way of sort of anchoring your drawing. There's a window in it, so we'll avoid drawing into there, but you can add some of these uh, arch bricks again. And then going up to this window to add some detail, what you could do is cut away That's going to be a window to the outside world there. And then inside, it's just, uh, again, using your own taste to create a shape that indicates that the brick comes into it. And it's not a perfectly rectangle window. Now, the one above it is the opposite. So the window to the outside world is in that corner. And it's quite dark there so you get the effect of a window within a window if you like because it will be the thickness of the wall and there's a few uh, arch bricks there above that one not perfect and then you can have some here as well it's just you know, a ruin things aren't perfectly made we can just add the hint of some Arch bricks or voisseurs, as they're called, the arches. Uh, the rest of that is quite light. And then 
your top bit here again it's not perfect you can round it off you can add a few bricks here and there very dark on the right edge but then kind of lighter as it goes towards the the edge of the curtain wall there might be a few bricks on this wall as well bigger bricks that we can just add by pressing down a bit harder if you're really clever you could add a sort of highlighty bit to the edge of your wall where the light catches it and then let that fall away into the hillside And then with your background building, you could add one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Try and aim for nine little square windows. And same the other side. So no, they're not perfect, they're just sketched on. Just to give a hint, you might have a doorway or something there. That's not an important part of the drawing. We just put that there to create some distance so you get some nice uh, perspective going on. And then again, with your foreground foliage, you could add those circular movements again, depending on how hard you press they're either light or dark perhaps as you get to the top you could add some dark ones and then the other trick you could do is you could add some branches just by pressing so i'm still holding my pencil like that but i'm just making a different sort of mark so let me just show that again so it's i'm still doing the circular movements hold my pencil quite horizontal to the page but if I just suddenly change the way I make a mark I could just drag the branch into it that's a nice little quick way of getting some detail going and then obviously the foliage is optional you don't have to do this but it might just add a nice foreground to your composition So I'm going to just go to my cube again at the same time as doing this. So to explain, I now have uh, all my corners in the right place, but my edges aren't. So there was a magic move to put edges in the right place. And it basically jumps from there to there to there. So that one ends up going there. That one ends up going there. And that one ends up going there, uh, which is what I mentioned before about the, uh, the rule of three. So sometimes you need to reorganize your cube so that when you do that magic move, which is in my instructions, it will move the right piece into the right place. So you can see that's now in the right place, albeit rotated, but it's still in the right place. It's not, we're not gonna move that anywhere. Uh, this one is in, obviously in the wrong place. So it's a matter of going through, deciding which three cubes need to move 
use the magic move so that now is in the right place uh and then just analyzing your cube analyze the problem decide what needs to change so again this is like relating to your art projects you know as creatives we we are a problem solving all the time So with my cube then, you can see not only are all the um, corners in the right place, but all the edges are in the right place as well. Uh, it is starting to really look quite solved. Uh, it's just that some of these just need flipping. They just need to go around. And then the thing about this is it always tends to happen in pairs. So I will always know if a cube has been tampered with. So for example, if someone's broken up a cube and put them back in, uh, I'll know because it could be that there's one left which needs to rotate. Um, well, basically if, if it's an odd number, I know it's been tampered with. This one hasn't been, so I know we've got two there and two there that need to rotate because it's happened in pairs. So I know I can solve that. We'll do that in a minute. So the next stage with your drawing, everyone happy by the way? Everyone okay? You get your pencil, so it doesn't really matter if it's sharp or not now, but just like we did with the foliage, we are now going to go over our castle. So we're adding uh, like a half tone really because it obviously wouldn't be white so you just literally go over your drawing because we've already put our dark marks on they're, they're safe, they're fine we're just going to um, if you like shade in the rest of the castle because it wouldn't be unnaturally white and bright like that. And again, there's no science to this. Some bits would be quite bright and that's fine. We can leave those. It's not a perfect science. Uh, you could find, again, if you hold your pencil and make a darker mark, you can start to make even darker shadows with your castle, which is quite useful. Sometimes you get this sense, sense of depth. I'm going to be very careful to leave my windows open though, so that whatever, if we decide to put a background, a sky, for example, that we would see that through so that we know this window is a hole in the castle, a hole, a window to your soul. Talking nonsense now, that normally happens at this stage. Right, so just adding some right up there so that's nice so even in your dark bits you could make them even darker so they're in shadow so it's a nice effect you should see that those bricks now look more like bricks and not just random lines that have been drawn on so being careful with my crenellations that must be the eighth time i've said that word today and my voices that's probably the Ninth time I've said that today. Right, there are no see-through windows on these arches. We can we can grey those all in. And this kind of, this picture comes from an old etching. It must be a Victorian etching. It's a winter scene, so. I think this is probably snow, so we can just add a few sort of marks with our pencil, using it nice and flat again, uh, that these could be just like hinting at uh, quite a smooth surface. 
and then going back into our castle again not doing the window there because that goes to the outside world and I've, if you ever notice if you ever mistakenly go into one of your windows that's fine you can just use your rubber remember what i said about the um sharp point you can just rub that out and then draw back into what should be there I might make this a bit darker just to emphasize or re-emphasize that notion of shadow something coming out towards you correcting lines that should be more vertical I might want to make my um outline a bit more jagged as well. Bring all that in. And at the same time, we could grey in our background building. Bit of a hill down there, so we can just add that in. Do some more work on the foliage. The effect of some of these branches being higher than others. Some of them being darker than others as well. Again, no science to this, just your own personal taste. And you could just sometimes put a tiny blob as a sort of hint of foliage. Probably gets denser as you come down because obviously there would be more foliage and look a bit darker. A few more branches. Now, at this stage, if you did have um, colored pencils, this would be the time to use them. So we've got a few here. So if you do have, then you could add, for example, um, some blue in the sky just a few lines doesn't have to be that much again clouds aren't perfect are they this very natural and again don't worry if you haven't got colors that's fine as well um some yellow because i think this is a picture that's been done Dusk, sun setting. So you might want to put some some of this in your windows as well, so that we know the outside world is there. I 
Okay. Cheers, Kanj. Thanks for coming. Uh, you're practically done anyway, to be honest. But if you wanted to complete it, you can look on the YouTube. And then with the green, obviously for the foliage. And it's you can find it's quite a nice effect to draw colour on graphite pencil. It's almost like tinting an old um, black and white photograph. And then what I did notice, so then this would be green as well, wouldn't it? Um, there's some foliage actually on parts of the castle. So for example, there, that's where it's been overgrown by nature. Might be some down here. So you can just be tasteful about adding just a hint of, you know, nature taking over as it would. And then again, as another sort of last step, and you can spend more time on this in your own time. If you had a fine liner, then you could really sort of add detail. And again, don't worry if you don't, that's absolutely fine. But it's just another way of, um, you know, drawing into your drawing, making it a bit more uh, realistic, I suppose, that you could add edges. Make it more of a definite drawing, perfecting some of the edges, the shapes. You don't have to do that all over. You could just be tasteful with it, choose where you want to emphasize certain parts. So like, for example, the edges of uh, windows. And you could go through that as a sort of final step. What I will do is on my cube do my final step, which is to rotate the um, edge pieces in the right way. So that's those two done. I've just got two more left. One, so that you now have a complete cube. The problem is solved. And we also have a finished drawing. So the problem is solved. You can um, sign your drawing. And what I think would be really lovely is if everybody wanted to, when they're ready, 23, show their drawings on the screen. Uh, I can remove my pin now, can't I? Oh, wow, Monday. <laughs> I have coloured it in a little bit. It's hard to see on the screen as well, though, isn't it? It's it hard is, to see on yeah. Mine looks a lot more coloured in real life than you can see. Yeah. That's a lovely drawing. Uh, it's quite a nice effect to have the sort of grey castle. It is. Coloured sky. You can add bits of colour to the castle, of course, if you wanted to have some orange, for example. Um, it's quite nice. I'll give everyone like a couple of minutes. Uh, just to refine their drawings if they want to, and then we'll do a show and tell. And mm -hmm. then if anybody wants to ask any questions, I'll put the cube there to prove that I solved it, look. <laughs> I, I, I was making progress with mine, look. Oh? I'm making wow. progress. Yeah. I will I will email the um, your instructions out, if you like, to everyone. I'm a bit of a cube fanatic. Look, I've got all these. That's just greedy, that is, Alex. Just greedy. <laughs> <laughs> I had to borrow one. I just really talked to it when they came out. I loved it. I thought it was such a... It's quite 
relaxing actually yeah if, even if you don't solve it just to, the motion of moving a cube is very relaxing i find you can just sit there uh thanks andy thanks for coming um i think i think they were on. probably the first um the original fidget toy that the kids have nowadays yeah quite calming yeah and then i had to sort of you know i wanted to know how to solve it of course you did alex of course <laughs> i can't have a problem unsolved i need to resolve things so how are we doing everyone have we got drawings we want to show let's get sharon's attention Oh, beautiful. Well done. Wow. Keep it there. Mandy, do you want to put yours up? Oh. And I'll try and get a screen. Okay. I'll do another one for good measure. I think it's, I can hold this one up for me. Okay. Marion, Marion, is there anything you want to show us on yours? Anybody got any questions about anything that we've seen today? I think you're saying you enjoy the drawing, maybe use a ruler. Practice. Just... Yeah. Again. Um well, thank you very much everyone for coming. Um I really enjoyed the session. I don't know I'm typing that in the chat at the same time. <laughs> yeah, so I'll I'll type in as well so Sharon can understand. We do a screenshot of that as well. That's <laughs> Maybe uh, I have just made it. Sharon saying you cheated, Alex. Cheat. <laughs> Did she say you were cheat? Sharon yeah. say you were cheating? Because yeah. she's laugh. She's laughing. And cheat. <laughs> <laughs> I'll try and get a screenshot of that. There we go. Yeah. Excellent. Thank you, everybody. Enjoy that. Yeah. Thank you so much, everyone, for uh, for joining in. And I will send the link out. Please send your um your finished pictures because Alex would love to see them, wouldn't you, Alex? Love to see the finished pictures, please. Yeah. Um. Oh, you can email it when it's... Yeah. Uh, thanks, Mandy, for coordinating today. And, of course, thanks to the Arts Council for funding. Yeah. See you soon. Are we ending the meeting there, then, Mandy? Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you, everyone. Have a good day. Take care.